Hi guys, Cindy from Cindy's Art. Today we're going to do an easy watercolor lesson uh, painting a barn. And I took a picture of this barn uh, this summer as I was driving down farm roads. I was staying at a friend's cottage and I was out in the boondocks. I loved it. So I would drive down the roads and I would just take pictures, found this beautiful red barn, and I thought this would be a great one for us to paint. So I started off just sketching uh, this barn. I'm wanting to do buildings so I can learn how to do um, some of the, you know, I, I wanna do like paint Italy, paint Paris, whatever it is. Um, so one of the ways that I can do that is just simply by playing. And um, so that's what I'm doing, is trying to teach myself a little bit about the lines and how to lay out a painting for a building because of what I want to do next. So what are you painting? What are some of the things that you're learning and you're wanting to work on with watercolor? I personally was terrified of watercolor and I made myself pick it up uh, three years ago and I had not painted in over 20 some years, believe it or not. And oil and acrylic and pencil are my favorite mediums but I chose the hardest one and decided that I was going to challenge myself and here I am making YouTube videos and guys hey if you've not subscribed hit subscribe down below uh, like the videos that you do like of mine and give me some comics give me some feedback um, I do go through the comments so I can find it out find out what you are wanting to paint and what you are wanting to work on so I have some requests like painting people. Oh my God, please help me, but I will get there. So let's continue to sketch this painting out and then we're gonna to start to move into adding the color in. <clears throat> I'm using some leaf green and a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of a, a darker permanent green. And I'll have those colors listed for you below. I'm keeping this very soft. In this area, I'm not looking for detail at this point. Detail comes at the end. We want to capture the light. We want to capture the contrast. That's what I do. And then we'll add the detail in later. So right now, I'm just sketching out a little bit of the foreground. I don't have the barns painted with, with water. And I don't have the sky painted with water. That is something I already touched in that's a little bit of cerulean blue and a little bit of horizon blue up at the top. Why? Because the sky color is different in different areas. So it'll be more intense in some areas and lighter in some others. So when you're looking at your reference photos, just check out, you know, and, and look at your skies. When you drive down the road, look at your skies. When you're looking at fields, you know, look and see where those colors are. How do they change? Um, those are great things just to do besides getting outside and relaxing it'll actually help you think about color for your painting and if you've got tips oh please put it in the community page put it down below here and share it with all all for one and one for all that's my motto in life Now I wanted to work on this beautiful cherry red color that was in that uh, painting, or excuse me, in the photo that I had. And so I painted everything red except for where the white's going to be. And then I decided to use a little bit of neutral to add in with my red so I can touch this in there. I, I think later on I add a tiny, tiny bit of like ultramarine blue deep. And I'll add that in after all of these layers are dry. Um, where the shadows are, I will add a tiny bit of blue because there is a blue tone in those shadows. But you're most likely not even going to see that it's blue. It's just going to look like this beautiful shaded red. So anyway, got to practice with your colors and try different things. Um, I really love the cherry colored red that is on the face of that barn. So I'm just going to continue on adding in shading, adding some detail on, and let's keep going.
I'm letting the top dry and I'm working on the bottom and I'm going to give you a good close-up of this. Some of what I'm doing is a dry brushing, which means that I've got paint on my brush. My brush is very dry and I could scratch it across the surface. So you're going to see um, me sketching in um, and pulling my brush upward and that's because I'm dry brushing grass on there. Um, dry brushing grass is the easiest thing that I know. Um, pulling that brush upwards, it just adds a whole nother detail in there. And if you want to add a little bit of dark lines inside of the grass, don't do too much of this, but you can take the edge of a credit card or you can take a stick and you could just scratch little places where the dark green is and it'll wind up uh, creating darker blades. You can't take a back once you do it, but um, it's a great way to add another kind of texture. Just a tip for the day on that one. I'm going to begin to work the trees in. I feel like my shading's gone pretty well. Um, you know, there's all these cute white lines around the windows and on the barn. That was uh, a part of the original picture. Um, I use a marker, a gel pen at the end, and I'll hold it up so you can see it, but I use that in order for me to create these fine lines. I could use white paint. I also could have blocked it out with masking fluid. Uh, but I don't mind on some of my paintings to take a white gel pen or to take my black Mincho uh, pens and to finish off some of the detail. If it's appropriate and it's not going to take away from this being a watercolor picture, I'm going to do it. So right now I'm using like a burnt umber with a little bit of ultramarine deep uh, for this dark color within the trees and I'm using a very thin brush uh, these are Princeton silver brushes. I love them. Why? Because they've got flexibility to them. Um, this one has a long, um, thin head to it, so I can create these fine lines. And if I want finer than this, that's where I'm going to switch to my Mincho brushes. But this one I was able to do. I've got smaller brushes than this. Uh, and I'm going to use this brush to continue to create the trees and then create the vines that's on that little silo that's in the picture as well.
as you can see this is my jelly roll number 10 that's what this pen is that i'm using and i have a size 5 a 10 and an 8 and i use all three in here so these are great brushes this or excuse me um pens it makes it so much easier and i don't mind doing that being a watercolor artist i don't mind doing that i get the fine line that i want and i can take the time and use a white gouache in order for me to get that um, I just don't see the need for that. If I can get it with this pen, I'm not cheating. This is still my work and it's still my hand, but this makes it easier for you. So don't be afraid to try those tools and those tips. Guys, if you haven't yet, subscribe down below. If you like this video, please put a like down there. Any comment, feedback, or what you want me to be painting.